Greetings and welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the buck converter. We will work out some calculations for our load current, load voltage and also the ripple currents. And we will do that step by step in our calculations and also verify these. Now this circuit is the very general generic circuit of a buck converter in a very simple case. You see here the DC input voltage. We have a switch here. It is ideal. We have the diode, the inductor and the capacitor and our load here in pure resistive form. The VO is our output voltage and the IO is our output current. We know that the VS is 40 volts and we have a switching of 20 kilo. So the switching frequency is 20 kilo. That means this switch will be then switched by a frequency of 20 kilohertz. We have an L and the C for resistor is 25 ohms. The D here is our duty cycle, so it has now in this case 60% or 0.6. Now using these values, we'd like to calculate these parameters or unknowns here. So the average output voltage, which is in this case DC output voltage, the average or DC output current, the maximum and the minimum inductor current, and the peak to peak output ripple voltage. Now before we move on with the calculations, let's first look at the waveforms. This is the inductor voltage. We see here the first part, which is the where we have the switch closed. And if the switch is closed, then we have Vs is equal to Vl, so voltage across the inductor, plus the voltage at the output. And that is then Vs minus Vo for the inductor voltage only. And when the switch is opened, then this diode will be conducting, but then you have the voltage across the inductor will be then the minus of the voltage across the load so then we have the minus vo and then the sequence will repeat each other uh, itself in this similar fashion the inductor current is given by this ripple configuration you see also the in the middle uh, that the average load current which is inductor current the capacitor will be then shifted down by this average current and you see actually that is then here at zero and then going up and down, up and down in the similar fashion as the inductor current, but then shift it down as set by the average load current. Okay, now let's move on with the calculations. We have the average output voltage or the DC output voltage that is given by this expression. Output voltage is equal to the duty cycle times the input DC voltage. In this case, we get then 24 volts. The average output current is given by this expression using Ohm's law because we know the output voltage so it is just 24 over 25 will be then 960 milliamps the maximum and the minimum inductor current are given by the following expression before we move on we need to first determine the average inductor current which is as said before is equal to the average output current so that means il average uh, inductor current will be then io average output current so also 960 milliamps the peak peak inductor current is given by this expression you see here the duty cycle and also the switching frequency and also the inductor value itself and that will give us 48 milliamps now the maximum inductor current can then be calculated using the average and the peak peak inductor current now the maximum inductor current will be then the average plus the peak peak inductor current divided by 2 so you get actually now 984 milliamps and the minimum inductor current will be then calculated using this one instead of um, plus you see a minus here and it will be then 936 milliamps so the peak peak here the difference will be then 48 milliamps peak peak output ripple voltage is given by this expression and that will be then 3 millivolts and you see here that it is dependent on the value of the capacitor inductor and the switching frequency and also the duty cycle and output voltage all right let's now also check our calculations in the tina ti spy simulator this is the plot for all the elements we have in our circuit and this is the circuit we have drawn in the tina ti simulator you see here the vs the pulse for generating this 60 percent duty cycle with a frequency of 20 kilohertz you see the transistor here, which is then for the switch, the diode, the inductor, and also the capacitor and the resistor here. And we measure here the voltages and the currents here in these in this circuit. The summary of the values we have just determined are shown here. This is the V-pulse, which is our duty cycle as said before. This is our output voltage and the capacitor current, the inductor current, 
the output current and also the inductor voltage. You see the shape here of a second or higher order filter response, which is due to that LC filter here in the circuit. But let's now dive into the details. You see then more uh, information about this circuit. Again, the V-Pulse with this 60% duty cycle, switching of 20 kilohertz. The VO here is leveled at the side state value of 23.45 volts. So it's called load voltage, but it's exact same as the output voltage, which is close to what we have calculated of 24 volts. So that is fine. You see the capacitor current switching between a minimum of 17.84 milliamps to 64.50 milliamps. It is not leveled at zero amps, which should be the case in theory, but it is due to that uh, practical components we have in our circuit. What we also have is an inductor current, which is also going in a similar fashion. In this case, the minimum value is 931.1, and the maximum value is 978.2 milliamps. If you now use these value and calculate the ripple current for the inductor, you get here 47.1 milliamps, which is very close to the 48 milliamps we have calculated. So this is perfectly fine. Now, going to the inductor, I mean the output current, that has a steady state value of 938 milliamps, and we had calculated 960 milliamps. So there's a small error here, but perfectly fine what we have as the practical components in the circuit. The final one is our inductor voltage. You see here the maximum of 16.49 volts, and the minimum of minus 23.77 volts. But if we do the calculations for this circuit, for the inductor, we can do that by using Kirchhoff's voltage law by saying this voltage Vs is the voltage across the inductor plus the voltage at node VO, output voltage. And when you now want to calculate the maximum inductor current, you calculate it when the switch is closed, and then you do the calculation like so. It's 40 minus the 24 because it should be the 24 at the output. Should be 16 volts, but we have a little bit more, so let's say 0.5 volts larger. And if you go to the minimum, that means if the switch is open, then you have the minus of the output voltage across the uh, inductor. That will be give you actually minus 24 volts, but we have also again a little bit larger than that one. So there's a small error here, but that is close to what we have calculated here. Okay, now going to the specifically the output current and output voltage, you see here again the response of a second or higher order filter. The maximum output voltage is 33.37 volts and the steady state as we have discussed 23.45 volts. You see actually that this is also what you should get at the output. That means the capacitor should sustain this voltage also. It's not only the 23.45 volts, but it should be rated at 33.37 volts. So if you take also some safety margin, you can go for 35 or maybe 40 volts. That's interesting to see also in this plot. For the current, you have the maximum current here. The peak value is 1.335 amps and the steady state values, as we have seen, 938.1 milliamps. And again here, you don't focus on this current, but actually on the maximum possible current for the output. That's also the current which will also flow through the inductor. So this is the rated current which you should have for your inductor. And if you take some margin, you can go for 1.4 or 1.5 amps for your inductor current. Now, going on in the zoomed version of the output voltage and output current, and if you do calculation for the peak peak value, just um, this maximum minus the minimum, you get here 3.6 millivolts. We had calculated 3 millivolts. So some error, maybe in percentages, not, uh, not very ideal, but still very close to what we have calculated. For the maximum and the minimum output current, you see these values. And if you again do the maximum minus the minimum, you get a 0.147 milliamps or 147 microamps in this case. All right, this was our example considering the buck converter in the very simple case. We have also simulated our values, what we have calculated using the TINA TI simulator and also checked our graphs for the actual shape of our signals in the currents and also the voltages. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video.